In this video, we take a look at Cambridge Computer Science pseudocode and I've made a guide for AS level. This is going to be broken down into two parts to keep the video from going an extra, extra long time. All right, so what is pseudocode? Pseudocode is simply a way of writing code where a programmer of any language is able to understand the code and be able to construct actual code based on the pseudocode that has been written. Now, in Cambridge Computer Science AS level, you're going to be required to write out some algorithms using Using pseudocode that will show up on paper two for sure now technically there is no actual syntax for pseudocode because it's not an actual programming language the goal of pseudocode is to present a logical solution to a given problem now using pseudocode gives the examiner an easier time of understanding your solution to the given problem and you're being assessed on your logic presented you're not being assessed on the code that you write using Cambridge's pseudocode will minimize or even eliminate for questions or concerns from your examiner. It will allow you to communicate your solution to the given problem clearly. This allows your examiner not to wonder, hmm, did they mean to have this here? They're not interested in giving you the benefit of the doubt very often, so you want to make sure your code is clear and that it does what it's supposed to do. So let's start with comments in your code. Any documentation or comments in your code is represented by two forward slashes. You put two forward slashes, you can insert your comment. So let's take a look at comments written in pseudocode from a sample of pseudocode. So we have a procedure store variable by val x as integer, we're declaring temp as an integer data type, store the value of x in the variable temp. Usually your comments come before the line of code that you're commenting on. So here we are storing x into the variable temp. We end the procedure. Now, if your comments take up multiple lines, then you simply do this. So we have the same code we did earlier. Here's my first line of comment, store the value of x in the variable temp. It goes on and on and on, and I keep explaining things. We continue it on the next line and include the forward slashes again. You do not use a forward slash followed by a star. You use two forward slashes for each line. If it goes on to a new line, you have to put those two forward slashes again. So then I'm storing X and temp and I simply end my procedure. And that is how you do comments in your code. All right, data types. There are multiple data types for pseudocode that you need to be uh, familiar with, and you need to know which ones are most appropriate to use for a given problem. The first one is gonna be integer. This is used for whole numbers, 10, negative four, six. Um, it can be negative five. I, all even numbers there, but they could be odd. It's just going to be whole numbers. Then we have the data type real. This is numbers with decimals, 3.14, negative 0.19, 1.0 would be another one, char. This is one character shown by single quotes, and the single quotes is most important. On paper two, they're going to ask you or they'll give you single characters with a single quote. That is a dead giveaway that it's a character. Now, a character can be a letter, it can be a symbol, and it can be a number. The number three here is the character three, not the number three. So if I wanted to see if this character three was equal to the number three, it's going to say false, that they're not equal to one another. So it's very important you understand that. Then we have a string, alphanumeric character. So it can be anything on the keyboard and it's shown by uh, double quotes. Here is a string a character. The char data type takes up less space than a string because it records one character. A string can also be one character, but it can also be zero. If we want to clean the string or initialize all the strings, put them to zero. Uh, zero characters. It can be multiple characters. And then we have Boolean. This is simply true and false. It's given in uppercase because they are keywords, so it's going to come out to either true or false. And then we have date, which is a calendar date, and it must be a valid calendar date. For example, we have 23 slash 10 slash 77. Now, if you live uh, in most parts of the world, this is not going to be a problem for you because the date is usually given in this format. Here in the U.S., it's given the other way. It's given as month, month, day, day, followed by the four years. So this would be October 23rd, 2077. Now, it's very, very important when you're going to take your exam that you mem remember especially if you live in the U 
in the US, it's given by day, day, two digit day, two digit month, four digit year. It's very, very important uh, you remember that. Okay, keywords versus variables. So you may have noticed that some of the text you have seen today has included words in all uppercase and others a mix of uppercase and lowercase. Now a keyword should be given in all uppercase. Your data types, for instance, are considered keywords. A variable in your pseudocode should consist of what we call camel case. This means the first letter of each word in your variable is uppercase for easier identification. Here's an example. Num. I know that that is a variable, not a keyword, because I have an uppercase letter and two lowercase letters. But maybe I want to make it my variable longer, such as user num. This includes camel case. The first letter of the word user has a capital U. The first letter of the word num has a capital N, and it makes it much easier to read. Or I could do comp picks num for computer is picking a number. Each of the first letters in each of those words has a capital letter, which just makes it easier to read. All right, identifiers. So identifiers are your name or names given to your variable or variables, constants, procedures, and function. You're given it a name. Each must start with a letter. You're not allowed to start with a symbol. You're not allowed to start with a number and not an accident letter. An accident letter shouldn't be used on an exam because in the English language, there are no accident letters. And when you're writing your answers, they must be in the form of English. Now your identifiers should be given names that have to deal with the variable, the constant, the procedure, and or function. You should not simply call it num1, num2, or x, y, uh, integer a, integer b. You want to give it a meaningful name. Now, identifiers will not be considered case sensitive. This means username with a lowercase u and username with a capital U and a capital N will and uh, should not be used as separate identifiers. They will be counted as the same thing. They should not be used as separate identifiers. All right, declaring a variable. Use the keyword declare. This keyword should never be used as an identifier because it is a keyword. So here's the syntax. We use the word declare, all caps. We give our variable an identifier name, and then we declare the data type. So here are some examples. We declare name, colon, what is the data type? String. We declare age, put the colon, what is the data type? Integer. We declare GPA, colon, what is the data type? We declare it as real. Those are ways that you simply declare a variable. Constants uses the keyword constant. This keyword should never be used as an identifier because it is a key word. Great for values that are never altered or have minimal updates in a program. There's no data type given here, but it is understood by looking at the declaration and identifier. So let's take a look here. So we have constant and identifier equals the value. So we don't have a data type here. It's gonna be understood. Here's an example, constant minimum wage equals $15. So it's going to be 15.00. I did not have to declare it as real, the data type as real. Constant placeholder character. I need a placeholder character. Simply going to do that as the capital X. I don't have to declare that as a character inside my pseudocode. Here's another one. Constant placeholder name equals username. I did not have to declare that as a string. So I use constant the name of my identifier, and then I assign it a value with an equal sign. All right, so how do we assign a value if we don't use the equal sign? When assigning a value to a variable, you use the arrow key, and it's always going to be pointing to the left. It will be assumed that you have already declared the variable and assigned it an identifier in the syntax that I give you. So in the syntax, we have the identifier, the name of our variable, then we have a left facing arrow and we're showing the value, whatever it may be, going into our variable. So here are some examples. Total pay is gonna be the hours multiplied by minimum wage. Total cost may be the cost multiplied by the tax. These are how we assign a value. We are using that 
arrow key. GPA, total points divided by seven. Those are ways that you assign a value. We're using that left arrow key, and it shows up in multiple forms of pseudocode. Now, declaring arrays. Both 1D arrays and 2D arrays have an upper bound and a lower bound. You need to include these, and both are considered inclusive. So here's the syntax for 1D arrays. You declare whatever your array is called, colon, what is the data type? It's an array. You do the lower bound followed by the upper bound of the collection of data type. So here we go. Declare a math students. It's going to be an array. My lower bound is going to be one, which means we are starting at index one, not index zero. And I'm allowed to go up to 25 students and they're all going to be strings. For 2D arrays, you declare the identifier name just like you did for a 1D array, but this time you're going to include lower bound one, upper bound one for the row, followed by uh, lower bound two, upper bound two for the column, um, for whatever it may be. So you're going to, because this follows a table, you're going to have row and column. So you need to declare how many rows you have, how many columns you have, and then of, of course the data type. So if we have a treasure map grid, we want to do an array of one to 10 uh, for the rows. And then I want 10 columns, so I have a 10 by 10 grid. It's going to be a character, because maybe I want to show a question mark if they haven't dug in that location. Maybe I want to show a uh, open circle to show that the hole is empty that they dug, and maybe an X to show where treasure marks the spot. We do have a 2D array treasure hunting program, both in Java and VB, if you want to check it out and become more familiar with 2D arrays. Now that you have arrays, how do we give a value to an array? Well, that left hand arrow and mix of return. You must state the index of the array being given a value. Because an array has an index, you need to reference that index. So math students five, what am I putting inside index five of math students? I'm putting the name Ricardo. Treasure map grid four, five. I'm gonna put a question mark. So that takes care of arrays. Moving on to composite types. This is for a user to find data types. These questions come up fairly often and having the right format makes it much easier for you to get your points. This allows different data types to be grouped under one identifier. So here's our syntax. We create our custom type and we call it identifier one. Inside our custom data type, we're gonna put identifiers and we're gonna give them a custom data type and then we simply in the type. Here's an example, type student info. I can put name as string, grade level as integer, ID number as integer, and I can put that all under one uh, grouping, student info, and then of course I in my type. That's how you do composite types. Now, once you have your composite types, you may need to assign values to the composite types. And to assign the values, you use the left hand arrow here too. Declare student one as student info. So remember we had type student info. We declared the name as a string, grade levels, integer, ID number as integer, and all of that shows up under the student info data type. Because student one has been declared as student info, if I want to sign the name, I can do student one dot name, use that arrow uh, symbol, Francois, student one dot grade level, 10, and then student one dot ID number 5300. Now notice with the string, we got to use those double quotes here. For grade level and ID number, because those are integers, I don't need to use quotes. We show integers without quotes. All right, input and output. Input is used to gather input from the user and uses the keyword input. Input should be assigned to a variable. You should never input like the number five. It should be assigned to a variable because when you're gathering input from the user, you don't know what they're going to put. We need a variable to hold the value of what they're going to put. So here's our syntax and it's very simple. Input all, in all caps followed by the identifier of your variable. Here's an example. Input student name. Now output is used to output values and uses the keyword output. You can output custom text or variables. So here's our syntax, output followed by the values. Now we can output the identifier as well. So here are some examples, output student name, output welcome to Cambridge computer science. Now arithmetic operators getting uh, close to the end here. Addition shown uh, is shown by uh, the plus sign, subtraction is shown by the minus sign, multiplication by the asterisk 
in division by the forward slash. Now, the order of operations follow precedence, but it is wise to show the way you want to calculate using parentheses to remove any type of question about what operation should be done first. This makes it very clear to your examiner what operation should be done first. When dividing, you should be assigning it to a data type of real, even if the numbers are integers, because even if you're doing int integer division, eight divided by four, yeah, that'll work out. But what if you divide by an odd number? Like for example, average sum is gonna be assigned the value of total divided by seven. That is most likely going to give me an odd number. Now, if it's 21, it'll give me an even number. But if I do 22 or any even number, it's going to come out to a decimal. With integer, it's going to just cut that decimal point off. With a real, it's going to allow that decimal to be calculated inside and show up inside that uh, variable. Now, relational operators. This is the greater than sign, and you can always use the alligator eats the larger number. So when it's facing to the open to the left, it is greater than. When it's open to the right, it's less than. Um, and we're saying this value is less than the value on the right. This value on the left is, for the first one, is greater than the value on the right. So the value on the left is greater than the value on the right. The value on the left is less than the value on the right. The value on the left is greater than or equal to the value on the right. Same thing. This value is less than or equal to the value on the right. And then the equal sign is equal to. Now, if you're using Java or Python, notice there is no equal equal in pseudocode. So you're only going to be dealing with one equal sign regardless. Uh, when the greater than and less than sign are facing towards each other, that represents not equal to. Once again, are you using Java or Python? Notice there is no exclamation mark. For the not equal to, you are not allowed to use exclamation mark equal. You have to use those greater than less than signs facing uh, towards one another. And then we have Boolean operators. Uh, they are and, not, and or. Those are the ones you need to be familiar with. They're used in uppercase as keywords. These will always result in a Boolean data type, meaning they will always show up as true or false. For string operations, although these are always given during the exam, it's important to be familiar with them because practice builds consistency. You don't want to be the student who goes in and says, oh, they're going to give me an appendix for this. I can just go ahead and figure it out while I'm there. There's not a lot of flex time built into these uh, exams. Also, they're extremely high stress and you know cortisol is going to be flooding through uh, your body, clouding your judgment. So. Going in with um, being familiar with these is going to make it so much easier and not add any undue stress. So, for example, write is a string operator. Here's the syntax. Write, we have comp psi, comma three. This is going to return psi without a space, not space psi. So we start from the right, character one, two, three, and that is what we include. Length is going to give you the length. For example, when I have comp psi, it returns eight. One, two, three, four. It does count the space because space has an ASCII code value. So five, six, seven, and eight. We have mid. The mid, if I do comp psi, I have to put where I want to start. Then I want how many, the length of the characters I want from the starting point. I have L case R. This is going to convert whatever I have to a lower case. I also have U case for uppercase. Now note for mid, the first number is the character where you want to start and the second number is the length of characters you want from the starting character. So let's go back to mid because this confuses a lot of people. I want to start at character one, which is C. I want a length of four. So one, two, three, four, that gives me comp. C-O-M-P. Now, when you want to concatenate or join strings together, you're going to use the ampersand. So if I want to do herb computer and I want to put a space and then I want to do science, if I want to concatenate all those together, so it says herb computer science with a space, I'm going to be using that ampersand sign. Hope you found part one helpful. Make sure you're on the lookout for part two so you can understand pseudocode and get all those points on your paper two exam. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help our channel grow. And we'll see you guys in the next video.